And now please join me in our opening prayer. Our opening prayer this morning comes from the 14th century from Catherine of Siena. This is her, was her prayer, and we make it ours this morning. Let us pray together. Eternal God, restore health to the sick and life to the dead. Give us a voice, your own voice, to cry out to you for mercy for the world. You, light, give us light. You, wisdom, give us wisdom. You, supreme strength, strengthen us. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. <laughs> verses 1 through 11 from the NRSV translation, a call to worship and obedience. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. O that today you would listen to his voice. Do not harden your hearts as at Meribah and as on the day of Musa in the wilderness, when your ancestors tested me and put me to the proof, though they had seen my work. For forty years I loathed that generation and said, they are a people whose hearts go astray, and they do not regard my ways. Therefore, in my anger, I swore they shall not enter my rest. What does it mean to worship God? How are we supposed to worship God, and why do we worship God? Well, Psalm 95 tells us how to worship God and reminds us why we worship God. Let's revisit Psalms 95 and see what it tells us about worshiping God. Listen to these highlights and see what stands out to you about how to worship God and why we worship God. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us sing a new song. Let us come together into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. For the Lord is great, and the King above all kings. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are also his. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are his people. We are the sheep in his pasture. Now, if you'll bear myth with me, I want to share with you what stood out to me. First of all, it says, come, come. We're called to worship. We are asked to go to a special place. All too often, we think in concrete terms. We think about going to church, but it's almost more a state of mind, or better yet, a state of heart, that we enter into God's presence. So often we go to church expecting something. So often we leave church asking ourselves, what did I get out of that? Well, that's not the way to work. look at it. We come for him. He does not come for us. The other thing that stands out for me is it says, let us. Let. When we worship, we are asking God to let us come to him. We are asking for his permission we're not giving ours. We're asking God for permission to come into his presence. He's not coming into our presence. He's not presenting himself to us. 
we are presenting ourselves to him. He does not serve at our pleasure. Quite the contrary, we serve at his pleasure. And we worship God to glorify God. We should glorify God because while we are sinful, God is holy. While we're powerless, God is omnipotent. While our lives are transient and short-lived, God is eternal. We lie, while God is always trustworthy, and we let ourselves and other people down, while God is faithful to his promises. The reasons to glorify God are as infinite as God himself, and worship is just one way to glorify God. Not only are we to glorify God, we're coming together to glorify God. It says, let us, not let me. We're worshiping God together. Worshiping God is not something we do by ourselves. It's not a solo act. We need other people to fully worship God. And one way we worship God together is with song. Singing together is an essential element of worship. Imagine a service without any songs, without anyone singing. The silence would be deafening. Well, Psalms 95 reminds us that song is an essential part of our worship of God. Psalms not only tells us how to worship God, but it reminds us why. We're supposed to worship God for his character, for his creation, and for his presence in our life. We're meant to worship God's character. He's the king of kings. He is the greatest among them all. He is the rock of our salvation. We worship God because he created us to worship him, not because of what we might receive from him or because it makes us feel good or because we feel good. God created us to worship him above all other things. In fact, that's our essential task and will be our eternal task in heaven. Our worship isn't just vertical, up to God. It's also horizontal. It's for all the things that are around us. We're meant to worship his creation. In his hands are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his too. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands formed the dry land. He gave us light on the first day, not just literally by way of providing the sun and the moon. He gave us Jesus Christ, the brightest light of all lights. He gave us heaven and earth. He filled the earth with life. He gave us the land and all the living creatures. He made the flowers and the mountains. And every day we stand in awe of these things. Sometimes, like we say, we take the time to smell the roses amidst our busy lives. You may or may not know this, but the rose doesn't see you admiring it. It can't hear you say how beautiful it is or how beautiful it smells. It also doesn't see you admiring it. But God didn't just make roses. He made us. He made us in his image. We can see one another. We can hear one another. And yet so often we forget to admire one another. We forget to our, express our gratitude. For we are the image of God, and the good things that we do are representative of God himself. And we need to remind others that we love them and why we love them, just like we remind the rose. We forget to engage in acts of kindness and forgiveness, even when it isn't merited. We forget to overlook one another's shortcomings every time they happen or don't happen as the case may be. So don't forget to express your gratitude to others in all the possible ways that God has given us to do that because we too are part of God's creation. Another thing about coming into God's presence is that we come with thanksgiving. We don't leave to be thankful. By doing that, we come to him with thanksgiving. Thanksgiving holiday is a ways away, and when I was an adolescent, like you, I thought, 
why do we need a special day to be thankful? Why do we need a special day to remind us that we love one another? Why do we need a special day to remind us to love one another? Why do we need a special day to start over, to begin again, to promise ourselves to be better versions of ourselves? Then when you're an adult, you realize, yep, we really do need to be reminded of those things. There's so many other things going on around us that we forget. We forget to do these things. And Psalm 95 is a reminder to be thankful. It's easy to give thanks when everything is going well. We celebrate another birthday. We get a promotion. We get a raise. We're healthy and well. We remember fond moments together. But it's far more difficult to do when things are going horribly. A favorite psalm is Psalm 23. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. I'm sure you know it. A verse that stands out to me in the context of Psalms 95 and being thankful is, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Even though we don't concentrate on those words in Psalms 23, but it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. So even in the worst of times, we are supposed to be thankful. We need to be thankful. We need to remind ourselves why we are thankful. And we need to thank one another and thank God for those gifts. My wife recently found out that a friend of hers has a brain tumor. I really can't tell you what kind. I, I just know that in most cases, it's deadly. Of course, it's in the brain, which makes it difficult to treat. But it's not just that. Most of the times when we think of cancer, we think of like a lump specific lump. Um, well, this cancer isn't like that. It's more like a web that twists and turns around the brain, and that's what makes it so deadly and so difficult to treat. The day she found this out, her face, her faith and courage in the face of that news was remarkable. Honestly, it made no sense to me. I didn't believe it. But it's true. It was genuine faith and courage. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd be angry. I'd be overcome with self-pity. I'd give up. It would be hard to be grateful if I could be grateful at all. Like Job, it's easy to blame God. But God is with us, even when we don't want to be with him. Tragedy is meant to remind us to surrender ourselves to his care to be thankful in the midst of our hardships. And ultimately, he does care for us. He does bring us to still waters. Now, you may have noticed that 2020 is maybe one of the hardest years we've faced in a very long time. Um, for many of you, you will have suffered the consequences in one way or another. COVID. It's like some wicked combination of the Spanish flu in 1918, the stock market crash of 1929, the civil unrest of 1968. Some of you even might think there's a little bit of 1973 going on. COVID has challenged us in many different ways. It's changed the face of worship too. It's forced us to adapt to circumstances that we hadn't thought necessary before so that we can come together to worship God and to thank him for everything he's given us. With COVID, we're at home. We're not at church. We haven't gone anywhere to worship him. And so much is lost from that, from walking into the church, a specific, a sacred place, a place built for the sole purpose of worshiping God. So it's harder to turn our hearts and our minds to the Word of God. We're also not together. Being together might mean getting other people sick or jeopardizing our own health. 
We can't sing together. We can passively listen. We might hum along. We might sing along. It's not the same as standing side by side, singing with one another. And so what are we supposed to do? Well, Psalms 95 reminds us what to do. First, we're going to sing. We're going to sing a new song. We're going to find new ways to come into God's presence, new ways of coming together, new ways of singing. And yes, we're going to make noise. We're going to make a joyful noise, but we're going to make noise. When we sing a new song, we will undoubtedly make a lot of noise. I remember when I was a kid and we'd go to church and during hymns, my mother would stand up and sing. Really, my sister and I always wished she wouldn't because she was a horrible singer. And even though she was so off key, she would sing loud. She would sing loud and proud and we would always just cringe. It's the same for us today. We need to sing. She was right. We need to sing, even though we're going to sing off key, even though there's going to be glitches, even though there's going to be new challenges that right away we don't know how to overcome. But we need to embrace the fact that we're going to sing off key and still sing. God doesn't care how well we worship him. As long as we surrender ourselves, as long as we come into his presence with gratitude, gratitude for all that he is, for all that he has created, for all that he does for us, that's what matters to him. There's no right way to worship God. He knows we sing off key. So sing your song. Sing it off key. God doesn't expect perfection, but he does expect us to worship him. So with that in mind, let us close in prayer. Dear powerful and mighty Father, we humble ourselves to give thanks. We thank you for everything that you are and all that you have given us and all that you do for us. We simply cannot repay our debt to you. We can only come before you and worship you. We see your creation and we are awestruck. We see those around us and are thankful that they reflect your image, that we do good by way of your love, which you reveal to us in Jesus Christ. We ask that you accept our songs, our prayers, and all the other imperfect ways we worship you. We ask you to bring us together once again. We ask that you put the words in our mouth to thank you. We ask that you teach us to sing, to sing a new song, we ask that in the midst of all that noise, in the middle of our feeble attempts to praise you, that you see and hear us for who we want to be in your eyes. In your name we pray. Amen. And now let us all pray together with the confidence of God's children, the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. this time, I'd like to share a few announcements with you about things that are going on in the life of our community and ways in which you can participate. 
If you are wondering where Calvin the Cardboard Camel is this week, so am I. We haven't heard from Calvin in a little while, but we trust he is out wandering in our community. And uh, next week, hopefully, I'll have some pictures to show you about whatever family Calvin is traveling to. For those of you who are not aware, Calvin is our cardboard ambassador who is traveling via U.S. Postal Service to different families in our church community so that they can take pictures and share a little bit of their lives and what they're doing together and that we can stay connected as a church community. If you would like to host Calvin sometime this summer, please let us know. You can put that in the comments or you can just let me know or even call the church office. We'd love to send him your way and hopefully he is safe and uh, having a good time, and we'll find out what he's doing next week. Next Sunday is Communion Sunday, and so since we are dispersed all over the place, we are going to do that uh, just like we did last month. Those of you who are participating online, bring your own bread, bring your own wine or grape juice so that you can partake uh, online. Those of you who are here with us, um, you are Certainly welcome to bring your own bread and grape juice, but we'll also have the individually wrapped packets of grape juice and the communion wafer that you can pick up as you come in. Um, but either way, we invite you to come next week and participate with us as we celebrate the sacrament of communion. We are getting close to our new worship schedule. It's not next Sunday, but the Sunday after that. We didn't want to start the new schedule on Communion Sunday, so it's the second Sunday in August, August 9th. And last week when I told you about it, I made a mistake. I said that the contemplative worship, out, the outdoor worship service started at 8.45. It's actually 8 o'clock, so we've corrected that. At 8 o'clock, while it's still nice and cool out in our prayer garden by the bell tower, we are going to gather for a contemplative worship service, um, so that will be a, a quiet, thoughtful service with chants from Celtic tradition, from Taze tradition. Uh, it will feature a sermon, and we will be providing outdoor child care for families at that service. We'll take the kids to the playground and lead them in age-appropriate activities there, um, and we'll wrap things up after the sermon with uh, singing of a, of a favorite hymn, and that will be our, our outdoor contemplative worship experience, so you are invited to join us for that. Uh, for those of you who really like contemporary worship music, we invite you to come at 9.45. That's when our praise band is going to start doing their thing, and then you can check out right after the sermon. For those of you who like traditional music, we invite you to come at 10 o'clock, just as some of you have been coming uh, for the sermon, and then after that, we'll go into traditional worship mode. So it's a little bit of a blend to try to accommodate people with different preferences and different tastes. So again, that's Sunday, August 9th, when we begin that schedule, and I'll remind everybody about it again next week. I want to thank those of you who have been financially contributing to the ministries of First Presbyterian Church in the last several months. It has been greatly appreciated, uh, and it's what keeps us going. Um, it's what keeps the lights on here, what keeps the video feed running, um, and what keeps our staff doing the things that they do to reach out and connect with our community. If you'd like to contribute financially, there are three main ways you can do that. You can go to our website firstpresbyterian.church and follow the instructions there for online giving. If you have a smartphone and you have the Venmo app, you can use that to send money directly. And of course, we always accept cash or checks. If you're here in the sanctuary, the offering plates will not be passed, but they're out in the narthex and we invite you to remember that as you leave. Um, and however you choose to give, and even if what you're giving is your time and your prayers and your thoughtfulness, uh, we certainly appreciate that. We want to wish a happy birthday to those who are celebrating birthdays this week or who have recently celebrated them, including Kirsten Adams, Kirsten Adams Castillo now, Chris Sanders, Joanna Ariola, and Joseph Massillum. If you know any of these folks, please wish them a happy birthday drop them a message somehow and let them know how much we appreciate them being part of our faith community. 
At this time, I invite you, as Craig said, to sing along off-key as loudly as you want. We are going to sing our closing song, which is Praise to the Lord the Almighty. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.